Hello and welcome to this first video log of WorkspaceGuru.com. In this video blog, we're going to create the ultimate Office 365 cloud workplace desktop that we can create. To do this, we're going to use uh, Windows 10 multi-user. We're going to use uh, Citrix Cloud. And we're going to use the new OneDrive all user setup so that it will be set up in the program files folder and we're going to use the office 365 deployment tool with our own configuration.xml to combine all these techniques well it's really new there are some manuals out there i know citrix has a, a great white paper on it um, a complete manual from start to finish um, but there aren't a lot of uh, videos yet about it. And I, as an IT uh, consultant, I always like to see a video about some new technique instead of reading, reading, reading. That's just the way I learn. Uh, I am a natively Dutch speaker. English is my second language, so please bear with me on that. Um, yeah, so let's get started uh, by creating this uh, Environment. Uh, a nice thing is, okay, as you can see, maybe on my screen, it's now 11.16 that we're starting. So it's also nice to see how long will this whole process take. Uh, if I'm guessing, I think about an hour uh, from nothing to a full uh, desktop with Office 365. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. Um, the video itself, when we get into the long waiting periods, uh, like creating the Azure virtual machines takes some time, creating the machine catalog in Citrix will take some time, I will do uh, some cuts in the video. So first, let's get started and create uh, a new resource group. Or well, first, let's tell I tell you what I already have in Azure. So as you can see, I got a domain controller running in Azure. It's called Domain01. It's running. This is my domain controller and also my file server. So my profiles are on there and some resources like the Citrix VDA and stuff are on there. But uh, other things we don't have, we don't have Cloud Connector yet. Uh, we don't have our master image. We're all going to make those things. The domain controller is uh, syncing to Azure Active Directory. So their sync is running. Uh, so that is set up. Yeah, and now we have to set up the rest uh, together. So let's first create a new resource group to put our uh, new resources in for this uh, part. So I'm just going to create a resource group. I am using my Visual Studio Enterprise uh, um, subscription is the word I was looking for. And OK, I'm going to call it uh, WVD. Uh, well, that, that's also a thing. It's not really WVD. I just am using the Windows 10 multi-user uh, image from Azure, but I'm not using the WVD services, like their uh, gateway and stuff. They're now software as a service. I'm not using that. Why, you might ask, why not just use Wave, uh, WVD, uh, everything? Well, I think that Citrix uh, delivers a better experience uh, at the moment. Any, um, the Citrix uh, HDX uh, protocol is just a lot better right now than uh, RDP is, uh, especially if you're going to scale it through different uh, connections. And uh, also it has the offloading of like Skype for Business and Teams offloading is coming. Uh, so that is great. Also uh, with Citrix you get the director. So you have an administrative control panel in which you can see who is signed in, uh, how long did a sign in take, all that kind of stuff, uh, which you're not having with WVD at the moment. There's no control panel. And the last thing, of course, is non-persistency. So WVD at the moment can run from one image multiple machines, but when you reboot the machine, all the changes of the machine are still there. And with Citrix Cloud, you get MMCS, and that makes sure that after reboot, it starts back up from the image. So that's great. So I'm going to call this uh, WVD Citrix uh, Demo. 
because I'm doing a demo and I'm gonna put it in the region which is closest to me and where the domain controller is so that is West Cent oh sorry West Europe review and create and we create the resource group so I got a resource group another thing I need uh, is within that resource group I need a network uh, on which I'm gonna use um, I, the master image is going to connect and it must all be uh, non -start static IP addresses of course and the network must uh, connect to my uh, domain controlling network so I have to do some pairing as well so I'm gonna go to the virtual networks here you see my uh, virtual network on which my domain controller is joined but I'm gonna do a new one I'm gonna do it with the uh, Citrix yeah, that, that's oh, so a small small thing is uh, in English you say WVD in Dutch we say V uh, F D so it's it's really difficult for me to keep saying W W but but I'm gonna try I'm gonna try so WVD Citrix uh, demo uh, VNet address spaces is okay because my uh, other one is 10.001. I'm gonna put it in the uh, new uh, resource group Western Europe. I'm gonna name the subnet uh, wait, WVD Citrix subnet. Uh, basic, all right, all right, just create the network. Now, well, the network's going to create it. Okay, of course, we need to link those two networks together. Uh, the master image must connect to my domain controller, and my domain controller needs to connect to my uh, master image. So, to do this in Azure, we have something called pairing. A pairing is just you say, okay, pair this network with that network. And connect them together. So I need to pair the networks. Um, that just means I need to pair both networks uh, together and just say okay, you can connect to that network and that network can connect to that network. So let's do that. We go to pairing, we click on add, and you have to give the pairing a name. So I'm gonna do it like this a demo uh, pairing. Uh, yeah, my subscription. Gonna pair it to my uh, domain network. Okay. It's now gonna add the pairing. This always takes a while, but it's done. So if we go back here, you can see the pairing is done. Another thing I need to do is, of course, uh, set a DNS server for this network. Uh, so I'm going to do a custom one. I'm going to do my domain controller. But just one small thing. I can't remember what IP address I give that machine. So I'm going to check really quick. Uh, networking, it's the 10.004. Let me copy that one and go to virtual networks. Set the DNS server as custom. And I'm gonna save it. So this way, DNS also works between the networks. Okay. So now I got a set for my domain network appearing, so the traffic can flow both ways. So I'm gonna call this uh, domain network uh, to be a uh, WPD. Pairing, all right. So, pair with that network. And now we're good to go. The networks are created. So, now we need to do a few other things. I need to create two Azure virtual machines. One virtual machine will become my cloud connector, and the other one I will use to make my master image. So, let's create those machines. First, let's start with the cloud connector. I'm just gonna put the cloud connector in the same uh, resource group as my uh, as my domain controller. 
that, that one doesn't need to be in a different resource group or anything or a different network. It can just stay next to my domain controller. I would even uh, suggest setting it on a static IP, uh, which we can do when the machine is finished. I'm going to call this machine Cloud uh, C from Connector 01, uh, placed in Western Europe. Yeah, no infrastructure uh, redundancy is required because this is a lab environment. Please note, if you're not in a lab environment, you want to do this in production, make multiple cloud connectors. Because cloud connectors are the thing you need to connect to your resources and make sure they're in different uh, Azure zones and stuff. Um, those are important. So make two uh, or three. So do that. Um, well, of course, I need an image, and I can just use the Windows Server 2019 data center image. The machine, it says here, one vCPU 3.5 uh, gigabytes of memory is enough, but I want to do this demo really a little bit quicker. So I'm going to up it some bit so I got a faster machine for you guys. So this goes faster. So I'm going to switch it to the DS2 V2, two vCPUs, uh, seven gigabytes of RAM. And I got some more IOPS as well, which, um, yeah, the cloud connector installation will go faster. Okay, I'm going to make a local account on this machine. Ah, my Mac is coming with a default password. Let's not use that because I need to type it in. And yeah, this is a lab environment. So after we're done, I'm going to delete the whole thing. Yes, it's all, all right. Oh, wait. Uh, if you have a lab environment, don't forget to uh, say that you already have license. I'm going to put it on premium SSDs because I want a really fast lab. Uh, I'm going to put it in uh, my default subnet on the, uh, my domain VNet uh, and I'm not going to give it a public IP address because uh, I gave my domain controller a public IP. I use that to hop on and then I'm going to do uh, RDP in RDP to this server. Next piece of management. I'm going to turn this off because I don't want my lab to shut down in the middle of something I do. And I usually think uh, about it when I'm done that I shut everything down. So everything is great. I'm going to just review and create. I get the price in an hour. That's all right. As long as I don't run it the whole month, I can do with my uh, MSDN subscription. So that's okay. And my deployment is on the way. Okay, I'm going to start immediately a second deployment because we need our uh, WVD Windows 10 multi-user master image. So I'm going to put that one in our new uh, resource group. I'm going to use uh, create the machine name uh, WVD master. This will be my master. Now here we need to click on browse all images because we need to search for the new Windows 10. Uh, for virtual desktops preview, it comes straight up. So this is a preview. Be careful. Again, I'm going to up the specs a little bit to make it faster, to make the demo go faster. So here I think I will go to the... Uh, let's see... Yeah, the D4S version 3. Got a quad core, 16 gigabytes of memory. Again, gonna create a default user. Uh, next, the disk, premium SSDs. Yes, let's make it fast. Don't need the public IP address again because I connected those networks. If everything is connected okay, I can go from my domain tour. RDP to this machine. One thing I do need to do uh, with this one, with I don't know if it's the image or because I'm using different networks, but I need to um, allow the 3289, the RDP port, into it. Uh, for WVD, you don't need it. You just create it and, and 
the if you create a pool, everything is okay, and, and it takes the image automatically and it gives you the desktop automatically. But uh, and it joins your domain automatically and all that stuff. But because we're gonna use just use the image and connect it to Citrix Cloud, I need to get into that machine before its domain joined this stuff. So I need to go to RDP and we need to add that rule to the firewall. So I'm gonna to go to management, also turn off uh, that it's out of shutdown. Review plus create. And view it. You see this one is a little bit more expensive. It's a higher machine. And let's create the machine. Well, in the meantime, uh, let's take a look at the deployment. So uh, the deployment's on the way. You can see that. Um, also, it's also really interesting to always look at your templates. If you ever want to do something like this through Visual Studio Code, uh, you can uh, look here at the template that's used. This is the JSON template. These are the uh, parameters you give with it. So you see all my information. And this is the complete PowerShell script you can use. Uh, well, you can see it uses those tools. But you can download this all and put it in your Visual Studio Code and just run it from there. Really great feature. Well, in the meantime, let's take a look at uh, what is created. Well, you see my Cloud Connect is already running, so that is great. What I'm gonna do now is uh, I got Citrix Cloud here on this tab open, but because I need to download the, the Cloud Connector, I uh, wanna open it in my domain control, so I got it there. Uh, but later we will turn to the browser here. So I'm gonna connect to my direct tool. You see it's a public IP address. I know it's not the safest way to go, but hey, it's a lab environment. Okay, I'm gonna connect to the environment. I hope I can remember my password. Yes, continue please. And here I am. So what do we need to do? Well, first the cloud connector needs to be domain joined. Okay, so let's do that first. I'm gonna check here and see which IP address Azure gave my cloud connector, if the 007. Oh, and what I said, let's make it static so it's not changing. So let's go into networking, uh, click on the network interface, click on IP configuration, Click on the IP config and make it static. And save. So this way, he will always have that IP address. Nothing can be changed. So let's wait for that to finish, and then I can use uh, RDP on my domain tool to connect to it. I hope uh, you guys uh, can hear me all right, because I noticed my uh, MacBook is starting really to spin up its fans. So if you hear that in the background, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it at the moment. Uh, as you can see, it's also still uh, creating uh, the WVD master. Okay, my network interface is safe. So here we have our domain controller. So let's use the RDP client and we're gonna go to the you can see I already used this once with a different name I of course before recording tried to do everything already but I didn't time it so that is still one thing I don't know uh, we named it cloud C uh, just use my name and my password. Okay, so we have contact with that server. It's 2019 server, it's great. So 
signing in, we need to do a domain join. While this uh, machine is, is getting there, we could also sign into Citrix Cloud and, uh, and download the Cloud Connector software. Don't know how long this is gonna take just to boot up the first time, but oh wait, well, it, you know, it seems really fast. So let's first do the domain join, and when the machine is rebooting, I'm gonna download the cloud connecting software. Oh, well, what am I doing? I need to go here to the Explorer, this PC. Let's do it the easy way. So it's now in the work group. We're going to change that to my domain. Uh, I need to type in my admin account. And we're in the domain. So that's the only thing we actually need to do on the cloud uh, connector. And restart the machine. That's okay. So now. I need to download the cloud connecting software from the Citrix Cloud. So I'm going to start a browser. Usually I would <laughs> advise not to do a browser or not even do a uh, GUI on your uh, domain controller. But again, this is my left environment. Uh, in labs, we do things differently. So you can see it's also going to the European cloud. Uh, so uh, my resources are also in Europe. It's a fast connection. Okay, I need to go to resource locations. Here I need to add a new resource location. Because this is a shared tenant with all other Citrix uh, CTAs, we have the room. Start everything you create with your initials. So C double uh, T uh, W stands for Chris Twist. And I'm gonna call it Azure because I'm connecting to my Azure environment. So let's save that. Well, I got uh, no cloud connector, so click on the plus, and I'm gonna download the software. Luckily, Azure has a fast internet connection, which is great. Uh, you can see. I already downloaded it once, but hey, maybe this is a new version or anything. I don't think so, they're, they're the same size, but I redownloaded the software. So let's see if the machine is back up again. And this time I can sign in with my domain admin credentials because it's domain joint now. Yes, and again, Citrix has an amazing paper uh, manual about this whole process. So if you want to read it, I will put a link in the blog. I will put a link in the YouTube uh, the comments. Uh, now, what do you call the YouTube description? That's the word I was looking for. Again, I apologize. Not a natively English speaker. I'm trying to do my best to get the message across as clear as possible. Okay. So it's now a domain joint. I need to copy, of course, my cloud connecting software to this machine. And we're gonna do the installation. I'm also trying to uh, not cut as much as I have to in this video, just make it one big story, uh, make it look, but I know the cloud connector is, uh, is after the installation, it's going to do some network tests and they take a while. So probably there will be a cut here and there. But I'm trying to show you at least everything. Okay, you can see I got a few uh, errors when installing the cloud connector. So first off, I didn't use run as administrator. And secondly, the EA enhanced security is still on. So let's fix that. Let's go to server manager. Oh, didn't do it correctly. Local server. Here I got the EA enhanced security. Yes, and it's still on. I hate this feature. I, I don't see the point really, but okay. 
and I need to run it as an administrator. So let's do that. Yes. So as you can see, I also still make uh, make some uh, errors, and I hope that you get the same errors and you can see them and how to fix them. So from now, uh, you need to sign in to your uh, Citrix Cloud. So it's going to open Internet Explorer. That's why it says, hey, remove that security. Also this message. Okay, not the mic. I need to sign in. Okay. I sign in with my account. I don't know my password uh, on the top of my head, but luckily I got the password fault on my phone. So I'm quickly going to scroll to my password fault. Do a face ID and get my Citrix password. It's uh, of course a strong generated password. Oh, I think I made an error. But let me check if it's working. Ah, didn't make an error. Okay, now you have to select uh, which resource location you want to connect it to and the customer because I have uh, access to multiple Citrix cloud environments. I'm going to use the Citrix lab and I'm going to connect it to my own uh, resource location. So now we're going to install it. Now we wait. Now, well, the installation itself is, goes really fast. Um, the connectivity test at the end are taking a little while. But I can give you some information about the Cloud Connector itself. Uh, it just um, uses HTTPS to connect to the uh, Cloud of uh, Citrix. Um, the Cloud Connector is also uh, connects to the Gateway Service. Um, so that means you don't need a net scaler in the DMC anymore. You can just use the cloud connectors to your resources. Um, it's also a kind of mini delivery controller in the sense that if you are going to script something against, uh, or, or you want to make a PowerShell script to do something with the delivery group or anything, uh, and your our Citrix cloud, well, you point that script right to your Citrix cloud connector. Uh, instead of your delivery control, because you don't have a delivery control on prem anymore, you have it on uh, the Citrix Cloud. Uh, also, the same with uh, VDAs. VDAs you want to connect to. Uh, always during the installation of VDA, you have to give up what is your delivery controller. Well, if you're using Citrix Cloud, and as you will see, because we're going to install the VDA on our master we have, uh, WVD, uh, it's just the address of the cloud connector. That's it. So this is going to take a while. Um, I am going to switch back to Azure. Take a look if our uh, master is up and running. And as you can see, it is running. OK, well, as I told you, one thing we need to do is, uh, first, of course, we need to look at what is the IP address. I copy that one so I can exit it. Um, but what we need to do is we need to create a firewall rule that allows us to RDP into this machine. So I'm going to use create an inbound rule. Any, any, it's OK for the lab. I'm going to call it GTN9. And again, this machine doesn't have uh, a public IP address. so. It's not that I'm opening RDP to the world. I already did that on my domain control. And again, I would not recommend that in a real world scenario. I created the rule. So, oh, and my tests are successfully. So that's great. I'm going to close this one. So I didn't really have to cut anything yet. We're just going in one flow. If we go back to the Citrix cloud now, I can. Refresh here, and I don't know if it automatically. Yeah, it already saw my cloud connector. I get a warning because I only have one, but you see, it is green, so I can do uh, 
a fun thing, I can run a health check on the machine. And uh, the health check really shows you uh, the performance also of your cloud connector, as you can see, you've got the memory, the CPU, the disk space, great stuff, especially if you're running your cloud connector uh, continuously, uh, big environment, check those cloud connectors right from the Citrix Cloud dashboard. So that is really, really cool. At least cool for us nerds. So I now need to go to the client device. It is the 04. As you can see, I have done this mach uh, machine before. Now with a different name. Uh, yes, sign in. Okay, this one. And because I opened the port, I can go into it. So that's a really strange thing because um, the other servers you create and stuff, especially the server OSs, you can just RDP right into them from within your network. But here you have to really set it up. Um, and you can see this is on a different network subnet at the 10.1. So the pairing is also working uh, great here. So what do we need to do on this machine? Well, a few things. We of course need to join it to our Active, of, uh, active Directory, to our domain. Uh, so let's start with doing that. And after that, we need to install a lot of software on this machine. So here you can already see we are using the Windows 10 Enterprise for virtual desktop. And you see the remote desktop uh, surface uh is already installed this is of course the the wvd the windows 10 multi-user feature and uh, you can see we have 706 days before it needs to be connected to an rd licensing machine i'm gonna do the main join that's my administrator one thing I am working on is, uh, together with my fellow CTA, Chris Jöke, we are uh, working on a, a script that will do this all automatically. So every step you see, we're going to try uh, using the Citrix Cloud API, we're going to use PowerShell, we're going to use Azure templates, combine all that stuff. So it's just one click and you're ready to go. Uh, and we hope to present that near the end of this year. So at the, uh, so some upcoming events at the end of the year in Europe, we hope to do a big presentation about it. And you can also check our blogs, uh, chrisjoker.com and workspaceguru.com. Keep sight of what's coming there. The machine is now rebooting. I am using Azure Premium uh, SSD, so if all goes well, it should be done. Uh, yes, we're going to connect to the machine. Now we can connect to our domain credentials. So let's enter those. So now we're signing in as a domain admin into our uh, Windows 10 multi user. Oh, a thing I didn't tell at the beginning, we're also going to integrate FS Logics into that because with a WVD and Windows 10 multi user, you get an FS Logics license. So let's, of course, use that. So I'm going to go to my uh, resource share. I created the share with all the resources and I'm going to copy it all over to this machine so the installations are faster. So on my domain, Sim zero one. I got the resources dollar or the resource dollar. Ah, I'm now guessing what it is. Ah, that is it. So you see, I got the Citrix, uh, FS Logix, and Office. Let's just copy those folders to the desktop. And from here, we're going to start installations and stuff. Another thing I'm um, going to going to do is uh, use the Citrix optimizer on this desktop because hey why not uh, why not optimize your Windows 10 multi-user bit so that every user that signs on uh, 
uses less resources so the machine has a better performance and you can get more uh, people on the same machine which saved you money because as we all know you have to pay for the resources in Azure so every resource you can spare is uh, something of a win uh, of a win again talking uh, Dutch words in my English not really great okay copying it's going so what I did is I downloaded the complete uh, Citrix virtual apps and desktops uh, 1903 uh, image you don't have to do this you can also just cop, uh, download the the, the VDA as a separate installation file because we don't need anything else from this image we don't need the license server directly because that's all over there in Citrix cloud so you don't have to do that uh, I just happen to have that, that ISO so as you can see I also download the, the optimizer so what we're first going to do is we're going to start and install Office well I'm first going to install OneDrive I'm opening up uh, uh, the command prompt I'm going to go to my uh, folder on the desktop so that is users uh, my admin account and desktop and here I got up oh, of course go to the office folder and here is the OneDrive setup and this is the really great new feature you can install OneDrive with the slash all users what it does I'm going to hit enter so it can get started. While it's installing, I will explain what it is. This will install OneDrive in the program files folder instead of in a user's profile. So everyone that's signing in to this machine, this multi-user machine, will have OneDrive already in their start menu. Ready to go, ready to sync. That is great. What we first did and what I even wrote a blog about was uh, as soon as you use a sign in, run the install for the first time or check if the install is already done. Uh, but yeah, the sign in and the whole installation runs, it takes a lot of CPU time. It's not great. So for now, check, I got OneDrive as an admin. That's great, I'm not gonna use it. But here in my program files, uh, I got Microsoft OneDrive to installation just in program files. And this is great. We we ask for this so long in the multi-user environment just do a per machine install and even teams is also getting a per machine install uh, and now that microsoft is doing more than multiple users in wvd they they finally get it they finally think oh wait this is not handy in the use profile we're gonna do it this way so microsoft going into that multi-user uh, desktop uh, environment is great for everyone even you on-prem who still uses a uh, server 2016 RDP environment, you can now install it this way. Great. Now, the next thing we need to do is, of course, install uh, Office 365. What I did is online you got an XML generator. You can just walk through it in the blog. I will put a link uh, and it will create your XML. So if you're going to look in the XML, I did a few things. We're going to install Office 365 Pro Plus uh, in English because everything here is still English. Um, and I thought, well, we don't want to wait too long on the installation. I'm going to leave out Access Groove, Link, OneNote Publisher. And another thing I need to leave out is, of course, OneDrive. Because OneDrive, I just installed it per machine. So don't put it in your Office installation. Other thing you need to do is, of course, the shared computing license so the multi-user license you need to set it to one so I did that now using the Office deployment tool so the set up the extra uh, configure I think it's slash configure sure to do some typing and then it's the XML so now it will install Office. It will download the latest version. I, I put that in the 
in the XML as well. So please just download the latest version and use this to install it. So I'm hoping everything is getting all right. Yeah, installing Office will be just done in a moment. So I think this is a time that I'm now gonna pause the video and we're gonna come back when Office is completely installed. So as you can see, Office is installed and it's finished. So that's great. If you look in the start menu, you will probably see we have got Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, Excel. Great. So the next thing we need to do is install FS Logix. So let's go to the folder. This folder I downloaded from the FS Logix website. There's a link in the WVD documentation website to this zip. And as you can see, it comes with the software and a license key. This license key uh, works on the Windows 10 multi-user and you just get a okay, license forever. So we're going to copy that one. We're going to go into the 64-bit folder and we're going to use the app setup. Uh, typically, it will generate a trial key, but we got a real license. And as you might know, FS Logix is uh, bought by uh, Microsoft. So uh, Microsoft has now uh, combined the FS Logic license with a lot of other things they have, like Microsoft E3, Microsoft E5, uh, ADS calls, uh, all kinds of stuff. And you can even, if you have ADS calls on premise, you can now use FS Logic for free on premise. So that is amazing. Um, I'm a huge Citric fan. I'm a huge Ifanti fan, but FS Logic Profile is just the best. It works so great, it's so fast. Uh, it's completely integrated with OneDrive and it, Windows search works, everything works. So that is awesome. Um, now we need to configure FS Logix. We do this with the registry. Now I'm gonna get my uh, second display to do some uh, looking up. <laughs> So we need to go to IKEA local machine uh, software. So you will see me looking to the side. It's my second display. Here it's lying here, my iPad, and I'm looking at the information from here. So here we need to create a new key. The key is profiles. And here we need to set a few registries. First off, we need to enable FS Logics. We do this with a D word called enabled. And the value is one. Yeah, one, it means it's enabled. Okay, cool. Another thing we do need is required is the VHD locations. So that can be a multi string value or a single string value uh, locations because you can now have multiple locations for your VHD cloud caching. Really great look into that. Um, so I get, need to give up the folder, so I'm going to copy my folder so I don't make a typing mistake. And I think this is it. Here, here are already FS Logix profiles, because as I told you, I already run the demo, so I got a complete profile set up. Okay, we need to save it. Yeah, okay. That's all right. And one thing I always like to do with FS Logics when I install it is also put in the uh, a string value for uh, fee, uh, sorry volume type because I like to use the modern VHDX format. So this way we have VHDX. Okay, one thing we also need to do is, and I'm gonna scroll to that here on the side on my iPad is set up the Office 365 containers. Because, hey, all right, we got a complete profile, but we also want our OneDrive caching to work, Windows Search Index to work, all that kind of stuff. So we are gonna close this one, and we're gonna go to uh, Policies. Here we need to create a new key. I'm gonna call that FS Logix. And there we're gonna create another key called O. D, F, C. And here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a, a D word enabled with the one. 
course, here we also need to do the string value. I'm just going to do one string value with PhD locations. Yeah, here also with the uh, S at the end. Uh, because you can do multiple. So copy my path. One thing I do need to do is I need to grant this machine access to that uh, location because it needs to write profiles. We're going to do that too. And the last thing, as I told you, I like to use VHDX. So volume, uh, volume type. And I'm going to put it at VHDX. That is it. FS Logics is installed. So I told you guys, uh, we need to make sure that this PC uh, machine has rights to uh, the share. So what I did in my Active Directory, and this is also in the Azure documentation, I created a security group which has full control on the folder. So it's called uh, SEC Profiles. And in there, I'm going to add this uh, machine. So, oh, sorry, object type. You need to put a, a checkbox at the computer so you can search for computers. And this machine now also has access to that share, so it can write the profiles. So, the last thing we need to do in this equation is uh, install the Citrix software. But first, I want to use uh, the Citrix Optimizer. I want to run that to get this machine optimized. So I'm going to click on uh, the Windows 10 uh, 809 build. Uh, if you want to know more about the optimizers, I wrote a blog a few years ago comparing the VMware Optimizer and the Citrix Optimizer. Uh, I'm first going to click Optimize because this is taking time, and then I will tell you about it. Uh, I compare them with uh, login VSI to check which one optimizes better um, and also a lot of pros and cons. Uh, I do want to say that the Citrix optimizer has made some giant leaps in the, in the past uh, couple of, of uh, months, years. Um, and now it does have a template marketplace. You, can download templates from anywhere. You can even import a, a different marketplace URL. Um, it, it, it does so much. It, it's just a great tool. And of course, one of the great things about this is it is fully supported by Citrix. So the VMware one, it's just a uh, VMware fling, I think they call it. And uh, it's not supported by VMware. It's a community product. Um, and what I find in uh, when talking to other experts, it does a lot. If you have optimizer, it sometimes does a little bit too much, uh, where certain things get broken in Windows. So keep that in mind. Um, but I must say, when I'm at customers, I use my combination of both. So I use some of the VMware optimizer, not everything. Uh, and I use some of the Citrix optimizer, but that's just what I created in the, it, it evolved in time. So the optimizer is running. One thing you don't want to optimize uh, is uh, the Windows search engine. A lot of optimizers uh, shut them down, uh, but we use FS Logix, we use Provo containers, we use Office 365 containers, so the Windows search uh, surface can still stay on. So I don't know, really know if, if this one uh, disables it. I didn't think so, but we, we will check afterwards if it's disabled. So this is running now. Um, I'm going to stop the video again, get back to you when this is finished. Oh, it's uh, done. Well, let's check just to be certain that the Windows search uh, is not disabled. It's still running, great. So, done. We have now also optimized the machine. A thing to notice now is that uh, we already uh, passed the hour mark. So we have been doing this for more than an hour. So what I said during the beginning of this one, ah, I think we can build this all in one hour is wrong. I 
think we're gonna end up in one and a half, two hours. Or maybe even that prediction is wrong. So what are we going to do now? Now we need to install the VDA, the virtual delivery agent. So it says here, virtual delivery agent for Windows 10 Enterprise for virtual desktops. Yes, let's install that one on this machine. And let's go to the setup together. What do you want to do? Well, I want to create a master image for MCS. That is correct. Also install the workspace app. Yes, please. I'm going to leave this as it is. Also, we don't use the profile manager. We use Apple's Logix, but as it says here, uh, if you're not installing it, you're going to miss some information in director. So here we need to enter the delivery controller. We don't have one. We only have a cloud connector. It's cloud C01. Cool. VPN. This is okay. So my tip to Citrix will also be um, maybe maybe change something here. Delivery controller slash cloud connector. So give people already more of a, yeah a chance to uh, get the feeling about cloud features. Okay, it's gonna do optimization. That is not okay. Next, just a simple installation. Almost the next next finish. And we're installing the VDA and the Workspace app. Again, I'm going to pause the video, going to get back to you when it is all installed. So, as you can see, the Citrix installation VDA is done. Uh, I also don't know if you see it, but it's getting really hot in here. It's, a, it's a, the first hot day we have, I think, here in the Netherlands. Um, and I'm sitting inside in an office completely closed off against the sound. Uh, so... Bear with me. Uh, okay, what I, I'm not going to do the call home because this is a lab environment. And we need to restart the machine. Okay. So let's restart it. Okay, so what are the steps we need to do after the restart? After the restart, I'm going to delete the files from the desktop because this isn't uh, going to be our master image. And one of the things with the master image is. Um, uh, all the files you got on it are going to be copied, so we need to be as small as possible. So, I think the reboot is finished. So, let's go to the machine. Yes. And delete the stuff from the desktop, and then we need to shut down this machine, so we can use it as an image. So again, what did we do on this machine? We um, installed the VDA, we optimized it, we installed FS Logix, we configured FS Logix, and we installed Office, and we installed OneDrive per machine. So that's a great set of features to have. Of course, if you're gonna use this in the real world uh, at your own um, your own applications, of course, to the image. So we're now going to go back to uh, Azure. So when the log off is completely done, yes, okay, this is my domain control, and I'm going to go back to Azure. That was my screen recording, you saw really quick. <laughs> um, okay, I need to stop this machine completely. And it must be de-located. So that's running, okay. Now we can go into Citrix Cloud just from the browser here. And we're gonna go starting the creation of my uh, desktop. So I'm gonna go to virtual apps and desktops in Citrix Cloud. Maybe uh, the browser was open too long. Let's do a refresh. Yeah, there it's coming. Virtual apps and desktops. Yeah, now it's working. So what I want to do is I want to go to full configuration and hold, behold, you just get uh, the studio as you are, just like if you're on premise. 
So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a hosting connection between Azure and uh, this Citrix Studio here. So I'm going to add my connection and resources. I'm going to choose uh, Microsoft Azure. And you see it already has the zone uh, name of my uh, cloud connector, uh, the, the resource location I, I gave. So I'm going to choose that one. Studio tools. Yeah, machine create service. Yes, please. OK, now I need to enter my subscription ID. So I am uh, going to copy that and come back here. I'm gonna pause the video because subscription ID is something I don't want to share, of course. So I got my subscription ID in there. Uh, with my mad video skills, I blocked it out so you can't see it anymore. Uh, one thing I have to say is you have to use uh, the clipboard. So you have to click on here and use the clipboard to uh, paste your subscription ID in it. You just cannot go to here and paste it. Okay, you need to give the connection a name. So again, are you gonna use my credentials, uh, my, my initials, sorry. Uh, and then I'll say Azure. And I can press create new. So what's it gonna do now is uh, connect to my Azure tenant. And it's gonna register there as an application within my Azure Active Directory. And I'm gonna allow it to do certain things. So, of course, I got multi-factor authentication. Oh, and I made an error. Let's try it again. Second, okay. Three times must be the charm, right? Yes. Okay. What's the correct password? Multi-factor authentication is working. I approve the request, and now it's creating an app and a service principle. So that's okay. And next. Okay, you can choose the region you're in, contain the resource you want to use. Well, for me, that's Western Europe. The network you want to use. Well, we're going to use that uh, new network we created. Because there's the master image and everything on there is uh, dynamic. There are master static machines on there. So WVD Citrix uh, demo. Inet. Next, finish. So now we added our Azure environment to uh, Citrix. A uh, cool thing is now if you look in Microsoft Azure and the uh, Azure Active Directory, application registrations, here you will see the registration for the Citrix Cloud. So that's the this one. Okay, now we need to create a machine catalog. Create a new one. Next. Okay, so this is kind of weird. Um, we are used that hey, you use in a Windows 10 OS, so we call that a desktop OS. But because it is multi user, you need to say it's a server OS. So be careful with that. And machines are power managed. Yes, they're on. Uh, we want to do MCS and it can use my uh, Azure resource, please. So now it will contact uh, Azure. She'll show all my uh, resource groups. I can set this to 18, 11 or newer because, hey, we did the newest uh, VDA. Uh, and I'm gonna, yes. This is the disk I want to use. So it's in this resource group, and this is the disk we just created. You get a warning. The VHD must be on a stopped VM. So it cannot be running. So let's check that again. Virtual machines. And yes, it is completely stopped. So 
we can close this warning. It will scan. It's okay. I'm going to leave this as is for the lab. Next is the virtual machines. Uh, what are the machines we're going to create and on which the users are going to work? So I want to create just one. For this demo, it's okay. I'm going to use the same uh, size, the D4S V3 as, the, uh, as we did for the master. Not going to do write back cache at the moment. And resource group, I'm just going to let um, Citrus Cloud create a new resource group for these machines. So that is one thing. Um, these machines must be in a resource group that is completely empty. So you don't see any of my resource groups at the moment because they're all filled with something. So, okay, it also says, uh, well, if you want us to create this, uh, be careful that we need to have rights on your uh, Azure tenant. Well, as you just saw, I already added my Azure at hosting and you saw the rights in the Azure Active Directory. So this is okay. Yes, use that subnet. Uh, uh, okay, in which OU, here you can choose your domain. So choose my domain, computers, just put it in the computers. And let's call this machines uh, WVD machines 01 till. And again, it's, it's just Windows 10 multi user. We're not using any of the WVD services. That, that you use if you use uh, WVD. I need to enter domain credentials for adding the accounts to the domain. It does do a check on this because I uh, recently typed my password wrong and it came back up with a prompt. And of course, give the machine get logo name. So again, I'm gonna use my initials, Azure WVD machines, finish. Okay, because it's now going to do everything. It's going to create a resource group. It's um, copying the master image, all that sort of stuff. This is going to take a while. This can take up to 10, 20 minutes, depending on how big your master image is. So again, I'm going to stop the video for now, come back to you when this is done. And then we're almost finally completely done. So let's go. Well, finally, the machine catalog is done and you can see it here. We got a warning. The warning is the RDS licensing. It's an error. It says hey, your RDS licensing is not okay. Okay, we know that. The uh, master image also gave the same error. So what we can do is remove the RDS license warning. So we don't have the warning symbol on our machine catalog. Okay, so we got a machine catalog. Now, of course, we next need to do is create our delivery group. So I'm going to click on create delivery group. Yes, that Azure machine, machine catalog. I'm going to leave this on user management to Citrix Cloud. So this means that the desktop will get in the Citrix Cloud uh, library and I can uh, manage the subscriptions from there. So next, I'm gonna, not going to publish applications, only going to publish the full desktop. So I can click next. Delivery group name, again my initials, delivery group, Azure, WVD, display name for the desktop, Windows 10 multi user. So this is now ready. Let's take a look if the machine is already registered, if it's created and, and powered on. Now, it's not powered on in Azure, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna power it on. The funny thing is that uh, when you power the machine on, only then it's uh, really registered as a virtual machine in Azure. When it's off, you don't see it as a virtual machine. Only the disks are there. Now it's turning on. What we can do is here in the Azure, you can see uh, Citrix has created this uh, resource group. In there, you can see is now the virtual machine because it's starting and the disks are here. If I go to virtual machines, 
Here you can see I still got the master, but this is now the machine that is going to run with the users. So it is in the Citrix resource group. I don't get status in the moment. Don't know why. Doesn't really matter. Yes, we're just waiting here. It's on, it's still unregistered. So we have to wait till it's registered and then we can sign in. So I'm gonna pause the video again. This takes a couple of minutes before it's completely up and running. When it's registered, I'm gonna get back. So we're back, the machine is now registered. Just took a couple of minutes. One funny thing I wanna show you guys before we leave the studio, is if you look at the machine catalog, it now says OS type is Windows 2019 server OS. But it's not, it's Windows 10 multi-user. So that is one thing. Uh, yeah, which is uh, different. So now I'm gonna go to the library and it's gonna do a refresh so the new uh, services are there and we're gonna add some subscribers to it. So here is the desktop. Click manage subscribers. I got two test users specially created for this demo. I'm both gonna add them and they're done. That is it. So now we can sign in as a user and check out our workspace. So I'm gonna start up a different browser. Let's do a Firefox for user one and Chrome for user two. Uh, Citrix Cloud Gateway I'm gonna connect to. Yes, okay, domain. I'm signing in to my workspace. And here I will have access to the uh, desktop. Detector, yes. Let's give it access, okay. So, desktop, Windows 10, multi-user. Let's start it up. Yes, open it with Citrix Launcher. Starting the desktop. So this user already has an FS Logics profile. So if everything is going to go correctly, you can see FS Logics, uh, yeah, mounts the profile really quick, preparing Windows. I do have to say the first time you sign in as a user, it takes a little longer than the second time, but still it's not too bad. Uh, especially if you uh, reckon that uh, we're signing into a full Windows 10 uh, desktop, everything is already set up. Uh, we do have, still booting. We, so we have Office right there in the start menu. Uh, and we do have, uh, I think, yeah, OneDrive right there in the start menu. I can start up Office. This user doesn't have an Office account, but you get the gist of it. So while this user is working on the machine, let's start Chrome and do another user. Now we're gonna do test 02. Oh, it's not working. Need to type correct password. No, don't say correct password. Yes, you can detect. Okay, I can go to desktops and I also got the Windows 10 mode user. Gonna click on it. It's gonna start a another uh, Citrix session. Now it's a different user, test 02. So here you can see Office is there. It's completely working because uh, it's fully integrated with Windows 10, all the stuff. Uh, even Teams is installed. Yeah, Teams is installed into my profile. But they are also working on a Teams per machine. So that's coming. Here I got the second user. Also already got a profile. So I got a nice little background. Also got Office in the start menu. 
and also got the OneDrive client in the stock menu. So that's great. What I can do now is task manager so I can really see I'm on the same machine as the other user. So we're both on this machine and we are both using Windows 10. So that is awesome. Just to show you that it is getting a lot quicker if you sign in the second time, I'm gonna sign out the first user. This user is still getting the profile ready. What I say, Teams is installing in the profile at the moment. Not really the way you want it, you want it per machine, but that's coming. And if I sign in with the other user again, you can really see the speed of the desktop. So with the complete profile and stuff, with Windows 10, and I'm signed in, and bam, my desktop is completely ready to go to use Windows 10 and Office 365 products. So that is uh, my uh, first ever video uh, blog or vlog. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was, of course, really instructional. Uh, maybe I'm going to do some other things as well through video. I'm looking to it. Please just let me know in the comments in my blog or on the YouTube video what you think of it. Uh, if I need to work on something, just let me know. And I hope this was uh, really uh, helpful for you. I hope uh, you try this as well. You can go ahead and, and use Azure has, has free credits to try it the first time. You can get a trial of Citrix Cloud and just make this and, and, and do uh, with it what you want and maybe do a pilot or something. So this was uh, Chris Sis from Workspace Guru. I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh wait, before I finish, let's take a look at the time. It's now 13.08. So this whole process cost me about two hours. So two hours from nothing to a complete desktop with FS Logix, with Office, with a OneDrive, with Citrix uh, working. So that is great time. Okay, so this is it for real. Uh, yeah, please visit my blog, join me on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, uh, send me a text, whatever. Okay, bye.